Hello, my darlings. This is your host, Madam Tilly. And welcome to the Waifu Tavern Podcast. Here, my special guest today, we have Punky the Alien. Hello. And Upside Down Matt. Hello, folks. How's it going? How's it going, y'all? It goes. And how about for you? Pretty good. All right. Oh, I hear we're talking about the Mega Drive, as the international folks would call it. Ah. Oh, someone's I'm being sorry. fancy. Oh, yeah. Here in America, it's the genie, sis. Uh, and don't forget about yeah. Canada. They got that as well. Yeah, so we're talking about the old Sega Genesis, our Mega Drive, uh, depending on your perspective. Um, and we're basically particularly talking about the uh, the library of games. Um, uh, so, yeah, what's really your overall thoughts on on the, on, the, on the Genesis as a console, as a system? Um, yeah, from the design to you know its success. Yeah. If I had to be honest, my personal opinion on the system, it's probably Sega's best system. Though, I'm not, I'd be lying to still say the Saturn, if you live in Japan. And the Dreamcast do give a run for its money, though. Uh, if I had to compare it to anything, I actually prefer the Dreamcast, mostly because it was the main first online gaming experience you'll actually thoroughly get into and enjoy, alongside you know, a little niche PC game. But, um... It really wasn't too derivative back then. It kind of shared the similar style of the top-down loader uh, that its competitor had, the SNES. So it didn't really break a lot of molds, but it was definitely um, more fun because it had a lot better sound chip and it sounded a lot more organic and fun. A lot of games we're going to talk about today will definitely talk about their musical strengths. Oh, yeah, we all know that, that Genesis twang. Like, oh, yeah, and there's some games, it might get some hate for some of its music. But I thought, I think Sonic Spinball, that music, mm-hmm. I don't know. I unironically like that music. Uh, but, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> so, um, you know, what's your favorite Genesis game off the top of your head? Uh, Sonic 3 Knuckles, if that's. Hopefully that's not ca- cheating because that's two games kind of in one. I I wholeheartedly agree with that. I I, I love I love some my Sonic Three and Knuckles. It was uh, one of the first times I had to get a chance to get had to get two different games to truly enjoy. I ended up getting it in reverse order, so when I uh, started to enjoy the, the the save system of the of the Sonic Three, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, like, uh, say, like, I, I never owned Sonic 3. I had Sonic 2 and I had Sonic and Knuckles. Um, I mean, it's uh, still pretty damn cool that you still have the backwards compatibility playing Knuckles and Sonic 2. Sure, you completely broke the game. You could fly through half the stages doing nothing. But the fact <laughs> Sega went that far and they didn't have to was amazing. And the fact you put, like, Sonic 1 there, you get Blue Spear Zone or whatever it's roughly called, like, that was amazing, and I have to chalk it, to, chalk it up to Sega did an amazing job. They didn't have to. Yeah, I, I always kind of preferred the uh, the half pipe of Sonic Two, even though I, I suck at it today. Um, <coughs> I mean, I uh, think everyone kind of sucks at the half pipe. What? Like, I have done yeah, I'm horrible at the half pipe. I uh, no, I dis, I wholeheartedly disagree. I, the half pie is how I get the supersonic at least by level two. Oh, I didn't say it wasn't bad. Or good. I'm just saying most of them tend to be terrible at it, like me. Sonic, <laughs> Sonic 3, you know, 3D Maze, I, that, that's always clicked well with my head, so I can easily play it. Uh, but you again, want to talk about... You know, really want to talk about difficult bonus games. Sonic 1's de- bonus game was definitely... Difficult. Agreed. Yeah, it's it's like it's, it's basically it's like being unbalanced, you know, uh, in video game form. Like, oh, okay, we'll go this way, this way, this way. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, 
And boom, up I'm kicked out of stage. Drat. That's Sonic 1's bonus stage in a nutshell. Fun! But... Hey, you know, Knuckles Chaotix. I'm kidding. You know, I've never got a chance to... Never got a chance to enjoy the 32X uh, uh, add-on. Yeah, that's on my to-do list one day. I don't care if I'll use an emulator or a flash cart. One day, Knuckles Chaotix, I will play it. I probably should, too, on uh, things considered. I mean, I hear it does a couple of interesting things. It's just five zones per act, or, or five acts per zone, rather, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just, that's a lot. Oh. Yeah. I'm no, I, I'm no stranger to, go, to playing long, long games. So I, no big deal. But not everybody wants to sit down and burn that much time on a... Well, just, just to be nosy for fun, what's the longest game you've ever played? Genesis Ooh. or otherwise. Genesis or otherwise. Uh, Genesis... Mm. Oh god, I'm oh no, I just drew a blank on its name. Otherwise, fancy star no, 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 it wasn't a fancy star, it was uh, I want to say Soul Blade, but it's not right. Shining in the Darkness, uh, Shining Force, Shining, Shining Force. Ah, uh, yes, their answer to the fire. I want to say the second one. Where I burnt most of my time. Man, I never, I never played much Shiny Force, but like they're, they're definitely like cool games I'd love to play more of. And like it's so weird that the, they're the answer to Fire Emblem, but I'm just using specifically that time period. You know, we had the answer to Fire Emblem, but we didn't get Fire Emblem until literally the Game Boy Advance, nearly a decade later. Yeah, kind of weird. You know what? Thank you, Sega, for uh, taking risks. <laughs> How about you, Telly? Same question. My longest game? Oh, I don't know. Um, Final Fantasy XIV uh, does not count. <laughs> oh, fight me on Genesis. <laughs> oh, well, just said Genesis or otherwise. Oh, otherwise. Oh, longest game. Although, if someone has ported Final Fantasy XIV to Genesis, damn. <laughs> oh, imagine a D-make. Oh. I need to check in on a, on FF Seven and NES project. Yeah, the oh, I I played that. How is? Okay, so I'm gonna have to give you the the patch version because it just kept crashing on me. Oh, okay. But uh, needless to say, oh yeah, the balance is is everywhere. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> and it's glorious. <laughs> we gotta get and... back on topic. Nudge, nudge, nudge. Uh... <laughs> Oh, but yeah, the longest game I ever played. I want well, to say maybe Mass Effect uh, 3, because I would usually play like 50 hours uh, ago. Uh, let's see. Kuzi Zero might, uh, uh, or might give that one more reference. Might, though. Um, no, I guess I'd give it the Metal Gear Solid 5. Because uh, I literally, um, I played for 90 hours. And I finally just dropped the game because I was tired of playing it so long. I was only at the midway point of the game. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'd say Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, anyways. Um, uh, Sega Genesis games, though. Uh, let's see. Um... Uh, I mean, I got an easy one, though. I, I always bring up and people get tired of me uh, mentioning it. <laughs> Golden Axe. I love Golden Axe. It was a good time. It's hard as fuck. Now, like, how the fuck did I used to beat this game all the time? See, me, I, I know all the jank. I know where to go, what to do. And my most uh, co-op playthrough I did with someone, we almost no death the game. We only each lost a life at the final boss. Nice. Because Deathbringer right. is a... So, for people that don't know, and have only ever played the arcade version of Golden Axe, the Genesis version adds two additional stages. You know, one being an actual stage, and the other one just being Deathbringer. And if, if you just know what you're doing, the one player distracts the, basically, 
I say basically, you can't defeat the skeletons around that boss. You could just make that final boss a joke. I'm already, uh, that, that volcano level really stood out. Mm. Uh, are you excited uh, about Colin S4? I, I'm, I'm curious. I, I'm hopeful, but I'm very skeptical. For what game? Uh, so they're making a new Golden Axe game. Oh. But I'm skeptical, just because I, I don't ever want to get swept to the hype. It's like, it has to be good. Only for it to possibly be, oh no, this is possibly very bad. And yeah, I guess Gauntlet to look at. That was a what happened to poor old Gauntlet. Uh, and I know the last Gauntlet game that was in development, which was Gauntlet DS, I believe. Unless there was one made afterwards, that got canceled. Uh, no, uh, Gauntlet had a uh, PC release. Ah, uh, it did. But I know the mm. DS one did get canceled, which was which was sad. But uh. Sega games. Um, let's see. Robocop versus Terminator. Yes. Oh, I remember playing that. I had I emulated that. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. It's so much cheese. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, like you, you got to put in the, 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 the like the live code uh, for like a hundred lives or something uh, to get order to beat it. <clears throat> uh, or, but like, but I, like uh, that game was so fucking bloody and violent. Like, yeah. Gave Mortal Kombat run for its money, which, you know, that started the whole ESRB. Thank you, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Thank you, Midway, okay. for that. Genesis can do what Nintendo, Nintendo don't. <laughs> Speaking of stuff like that, uh, things that Sega was going to do, but Nintendo wasn't. Yeah, I love what I'm about to say something because my brain goes completely blank. So I, I want to bring up... Now, granted, this is, uh, I believe, North America only. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the Sega Channel? Yeah. Yeah. Never seen it, though, but... Yeah. I had one growing up. I was very yeah, young, people. so I was towards the very end of its existence. But the, it was interesting for having a couple games, like Game Freaks... Um, Oh, crap. I can't think of the name of the game. Crap. I'm totally not Googling this right now. Pulse Man. Pulse Man. Huh. Yeah, because that, that had a North American release only digitally that way. And it's a shame. So that game is really, really good. Which, if you guys have never played it, I really would suggest it. Because some Pokemon games sometimes make vague references to said Genesis game. Like, Voltackle is a reference to um, that, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Or some other digital games are only on that service. Going back to Golden Axe. Golden Axe 3 was actually only digital in uh, the West for the longest time through the Sega Channel. I don't know that. Or, because Tilly, I know deep down you are a Garfield fan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're deep down. You love the Garf. Uh, Garfield, the uh, Con the Act, actually has lost media. So when the devs were done developing the game, but they were, they were playing on the Sega channel, they made additional levels for it. So only in that version was there additional content. But it's lost media. Asterix. The PC version has all the lost content in it. But the Genesis version is gone. Mm. Interesting. We'll figure ways to get it back. There's always, somebody backed it up somewhere. Now just imagine, hey honey! Where's all my Genesis stuff? It's in the garage and all the boxes. I don't worry about it in 20 years. I mean, that's kind of how we discovered a few things more recently, too. Just some dude goes through his collection goes, Huh, I didn't know I had this. And then, poof, it's in the cycle. Or, I mean, not really to Genesis. Uh, there's one guy on Reddit, you know, the Nintendo PlayStation. Oh, I have one of those at my dad's garage. Everyone's like, no, you don't. You're lying. Yes, I do. 
I'll go get it this weekend. Two months later, all right, here's proof. And they're like, what? Like, yep. So you, you never know. Maybe one day we'll have one of the devs' kids just like, hey, my daddy has, you know, all those lost levels on his Genesis. We can hope. Uh, oh, yeah, we're in Jurassic Park. That was a pretty good game. <clears throat> yeah, the one where you can play both as the dinosaur and the and the human, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I never remember you getting fun that game, but it was a it was a solid one. The music. The music oh, yeah, is right. so good. And the dinosaur roars. Man. Is that it has been it has been ported over to the little Mario Maker not Mario Maker games. A lot of nice little Super Mario World ROM hacks is that kind of a song. Oh, I can believe it. Oh man. I'm sorry, talk about Jurassic Park. Do you guys ever play the Game Boy game? Uh, Jurassic Park 2? Negative. Would suggest hidden gem on the system. But I'm not, I'm not trying to derail. It's like I've been inadvertently doing all this entire podcast. I'm trying to think of a hidden gem to suggest, but we're still on our top five list at the moment. Um, Let's see. My next one on... Let's see. What was, uh, what was Tilly's first first pick again? Oh, Robocop vs. Terminator. Ah, yes. And Upside Down? You know, the next one, like I said, mine are no particular order, but Wonder Boy 4. Oh. The side scroller? Uh, yep. That we technically never got officially in English until 2009, though there was a fan translation for several years before. Oh, that game is... Uh, if, you, if you want, basically, I, I would not call it quite a Metroidvania game because it's not. But you could definitely see where Shantae takes some inspiration. Hmm. A little bit of the Arabian theming and, you know, those baggy pants. <laughs> they probably have a proper term. I apologize. I don't know what it is. They, they both have ponytails, except one's green and, you know, Shantae's is uh, purple. Start uh, writing geez. these games down. Uh, good, a good, good, damn good game. It's really high, fast action. Uh, Gunstar Heroes. Yeah, I actually beat that recently for the first time <coughs> last month. Yeah. Or did you like games. it? I did. I, I played it with uh with a friend for the first time. Uh, it took us four hours. It probably would take closer to three. Because, you know, he, he was starting to get tired while we were playing it because. Said said individual starts going to bed nowadays at like one one a.m. and we were playing till like three o'clock in the morning. Huh. But needless to mm. say, we did it. Beat the final boss first try. Nice. With like one or two health respectively left, but we did it. Little accomplishments. That's what makes the uh, world very fun. Which, while I don't know if this is my top five, but uh, the McDonald's game by also by Treasure is fantastic. <laughs> Though, um, uh, I'd always tell people maybe be careful if you ever stream the Japanese version of that game. Oh? So, I'm going to try and put as del delicately as I can. Some depictions are of um outdated stereotype of African tribes. Yeah, oh. It's in the Japanese version. I was like, you know, I'll put it blind. I was streaming. I'm like, I'm going to play the Japanese version. Oh, right. This is why I don't play the Japanese version on stream. Of the kids? Uh, not the kids. Uh, so there's McDonald's Treasure Land Adventure. Yeah, I remember oh. that sucker now. But the game is legitimately fun and good. Oh, yeah. I just... <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember reading the differences on that. Oh... Uh... Yeah, you could not get away with that. You could not get away with that nowadays. Even in Japan, you can't get away with it anymore. 
Because they're like, yeah, no, we, we know that's bad. Uh, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> again, the guy right, uh, Toy Story. Yeah, <laughs> that's a... That, that, that's, God, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I, say, I mean, and, uh, you know, it, it actually did adapt adaptions right, you know. Oh, boy, that, that, that's seven gen. Uh, those seven gen movie adaptions were bad. But Toy Story did, you know, did well. Yeah, it's about to say, I believe it was Traveler's Tales <coughs> that did the... Was it Traveler's Tale? Yes. Sorry, I always... Oh, no, looking up's fine. No, we're, we're not encyclopedias. We're not going to remember... Okay, it was Traveler's... Well, it doesn't know if there's Telltale Games to Traveler's Tale, so it sometimes it confuses two companies up. Mm. But yeah, they, they did a fantastic job with that, with the Genesis version. Okay, shoot. But nowadays, they're just a Lego developer. Huh. huh. Wait, Lego video games or just Legos? Lego video games, like... They're, they're the ones who did, you know, the Star Wars and kind of since 2005, with an exception here or there. Since uh, I'm looking at Wikipedia quickly, I admit to it. But since 2009 onwards, that's all they've made is Lego games. Like, that That just sounds like a hell. Yeah. Like, don't go wrong. <laughs> I, I think the Lego games are fun. But imagine, hey, that's the rest of the things you're going to make for the rest of your life, and there's not much deviation. Just been like a streamer in your downtime. <laughs> Basically. Uh, let's see here. Right. Double Dragons. And, sorry, Battletoads and Double Dragons. I'm about to get the uh, name backwards. Nice. I, so grew, I, grew up in a, I grew up in a co-op co household. If, if you have a sibling, you're going to be co-oping. Might as well play something that you both have fun at. Unfortunately, fun turns into us beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> Nine times out of ten. I mean, that's, that's, that's how it is. One of the first uh, battles as I was introduced. And suffice to say, I've only ever... <laughs> it took a lot of effort to beat that, that game. And surprisingly... She's not as, uh, I can't remember her name at the my head, but the last boss wasn't as hard as it should have been. It's the trek to get there. That was the hard part. Is it the and queen? From yeah, the queen. Uh, yeah, I was trying to remember her, her name in full. I know she was a queen. I just, ah. Uh, like the shadow boss. Easy. Surprisingly easy. Hmm. But her and her just is equally easy. But the trek to get there is anything but. Is 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 you know it shares its its Nintendo hardness with its NES counterpart. Oh, sorry, as yeah, NES counterpart. Uh, I'm about six. I actually I actually played uh, the NES version of that game. Same. I only was able to beat that with cheats. While well, May. On Go ahead, I play some consider the best version of it, the Game Boy version. Huh. I'm very confident. I'm going to just say it. it surprised me for a beat em up on the Game Boy. I would suggest anyone check it out. Uh, what version? Uh, for which is for which one is that one, if I may Game ask? Boy. No, no, no. Um, is it Double Dragons and Battletoads? Uh, yep, yep, Battle that Mania? One. Uh, really? It has a Game Boy release? Interesting. Yeah, yeah well, everyone I've told that they're like, excuse me, I'm like, I, I wouldn't mess with you. I, I might be a dirty, dirty, rotten troll, but I'm not a liar. <laughs> Except when uh. I did. Okay, and speaking of, I guess, co-op games, uh, one of mine is uh, The World of Illusion starring Disney's Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Oh. Which I have beaten as both Mickey, Donald, and co-op. So what's really cool about the game is so Mickey has exclusive stages. Donald has exclusive stages. Multiplayer has exclusive stages. So you actually have a little bit of replayability. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. You know, Donald Duck is hard mode. Mickey Mouse is easy mode. And I guess co-op modes. Well, how well do you work with your friend? 
question is, how hard was it? Was it friendship shattering? Well, I don't really talk to that fr- one of those friends anymore, so maybe. <laughs> um, how would you, how was the soundtrack? If we're gonna because uh, we might as well go back around and dance around all the stuff we kind of keep missing. We we can talk about the game and say, hey, yeah, we played this. It was all that fun, but we haven't really talked about the games in general. Well, I was about to say, the music of uh, World of Illusion is fantastic. Very whimsical. Like, I don't think it'd be anything I'd really go put on an iPod if people still do that in, you know, 2024. But and I, I, I don't have Sonic music you know, on there because, let's be honest, Casino Zone, top-tier top tier music. I think it'd be an iPod. Although, I'm going to say something's controversial, though. I might even get canceled for it. I think Ice Cap Zone is overrated music. Mm. Grumpy face. I'm sorry. I've heard the song so many times. I just... It's not a bad song. I just, I've heard it too many times. One of my favorite zones, man. I'm sorry. I, pers- I, I personally just got slammed... Windmill slammed. Took the wind out of me. Hashtag Batman. Man, I, I didn't have an iPod. I had a VP player, player though. But um, I used to just put my uh, music on my PSP. <laughs> I'm just walking around in my pocket. PSP. I know, I, you know, speaking of PSP, I know I actually did get some Genesis ports to it. No clue if the emulation was any good, but I, I guess that's one nice thing about the Genesis. Say if you don't want to illegally, you know, emulate anything. Thankfully, so many of the games we've talked about, with a couple exceptions, are very, very accessible nowadays. Whether right through the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, mm. uh, maybe avoid the Sega Smash Pack on Dreamcast is kind of garbage. Oh yeah, the Ultimate Collection for PC is is no bueno. Sorry, I'll have to respectfully disagree. They they separated the... Uh, they pulled off the uh, Sonic 3 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles from the store for a reason. They wanted to try to sell this heaping pile, and it's not that good. Well, I, I'm just referring to the Xbox 360 and PS3 version. Oh, my apologies. No, it's all good. However, the Sonic Origins collection, I, I, I do have some problems with Sega doing what they did. That was it. I'm sorry, I got the name wrong. Oh, I don't sweat it. That's a decent collection, but, um, uh, yeah, because, like, Sega and Atari are, like, whores. They'll put themselves on every freaking platform and console and generation. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you, you got, uh, the, the, the Sega collection on PS2? How about you buy for PS3? Yeah, uh, we'll come out with one on PS4, don't you worry. Yeah. Uh, Sneeze, we'll have it on PS5 next week. Like, you, you, you still. PS5 sit or PlayStation sits is out. I don't think you played Sonic the Hedgehog one yet. So, yeah, here's here's a Sega collection for that. Uh, Although I will say one thing about Atari, that Atari 50th anniversary was actually a really really good collection. Mm. Would actually suggest. I need to give me that one. I got the Atari Vault. Uh, uh see, but anyways, back to games with good music, Aladdin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like, um. What's crazy too, because like um, uh, both the uh, Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis version very different. Um, and one's yeah, done by that. Capcom, one by Virgin Interactive. Ah, but like um, like the uh, like the the Super Nintendo one, that one actually has good animations uh, and like like cut cutscenes and stuff. But the rest is lacking. Like the but as uh, the Sega Genesis one, great platformer. Uh, and the music is so spot on, like 16-bit renditions of every track, and it just sounds so beautiful. Um, and there's other cool parts about development because, you know, that game was made in a very short span, but, like, Sega worked directly with Disney a lot on that game. Like, they literally brought Disney animators in, the lead program, and made an algorithm to break down the sprites. It's... Cleanly is not the right word. But like to press them down as much as they can to fit as much game, as much graphics as they can in that cartridge. It's there's it amazing documentary. I believe Splash Wave had made it. If I if I'm remembering their name, or it's Splash Strife, something like that their name. 
And it's just amazing how much Sega just made that game work in such a short span of time. Because they made that game to coincide with the DHS release of Memory Serves Me Right. I mean, so they should today. Sorry. Uh, that's, uh, that's what Sega really shined. They, they were able to do a lot with all the hardware. They knew where to tap it, where to, to really capitalize on it. They were the pioneers of a lot of things in the, around that time. And if they couldn't pioneer it, they cheated to be able to do it. Oh, yeah. Same with, like, um, Treasure. Because uh, they took advantage of a glitch in the Genesis 1 and 2 hardware to basically temporarily double the color count or something along that with it. But the problem is, if you have a Genesis 3, some of their games don't fully work. Womp womp. I had Gen 1. Um, well, there's also a Game Boy port of Aladdin, which also play, play it was just like the Genesis, but very ugly. Just... Believe it. I think it's Punky's turn. Yes. Oh, I'm batting around which one, which one I wanted to throw in next. You know what? Let's so we talked about franchises earlier with Toy Story. How? Uh, how? I mean, out of the two of you, I was going to say, out of all of you, um, did you play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters? Oh, that game on the NES is horrible, but I did play the much better one, in Genesis Hyperstone Heist. Uh, that, that's the that's beat him up. I'm talking about the, uh, the, he's talking about the fighting game. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, of the Turtle games I've played on the system. Yeah, uh, Hyperstone, uh, first of all, the Tournament Fighters, that was so fucking hard. Uh, yeah. It's SNES counterpart does kind of shine a little bit better, unfortunately. But it was competent. Uh, if I can rant about something, uh, uh -oh. listen to this. Um, that, that fucking, was it a Ninja Turtles Calabunga collection? What the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's like 12, 13 Ninja Turtle games. That got me excited. But like, and it's like, oh no, it's actually just like five games. It's just, you know, ports, you know, uh, of the other ones. Like, oh, it's like, yeah, you play like Tournament Fighters, the NES version, the Super Nintendo version, the Sega Genesis version, the Game Boy version. Yeah, like, like, why? These ain't giving games, it's just fucking ports. Yeah, the Cowboy yeah, like, Collection. Uh. Yeah, like I was expecting, you know, like you know, a couple of like the like the uh, GameCube games, you know, maybe like one of the uh, the 360 games, you know, like you know, I want uh, some highlights. Say so these games all the obscure crap and ports. I mean, to be fair, Hyperstone Heist was really fun. No, Hyperstone Heist was fun, but it's just uh, they they should offer like some of the like the uh, the, uh, the 3D games and, and stuff like that, you know, instead of just you know, fill like. Uh, I think like some of those were ports. were Ubisoft, uh, so they may not have even had, you know, any rights to them. They should, uh, they, they at least should have stay you out. Know, Although a bit better, but anyways. I don't know. I'm, can I go off topic for Hyperstone just a moment? Because oh, I don't think I'd ever get a chance to ever talk about this game otherwise. Oh. Team oh. NT, the movie, the 2000. Five or six film, fantastic on Game Boy Advance. Would suggest if you want a great beat em up. Hmm. Huh. Because I, I don't think I'd be able to talk about it in like any other of your podcasts unless we start doing Game Boy Advance ones. Eventually. No, well, yeah. I might be around there for that podcast then. I hope so. It's been a delight so far. Yee. Um, but yeah, Hyperstone Heist, good fucking game. I played that one a little, like, probably a little bit more than the uh, Super Nintendo one, because I, uh, Turtles of Time, because I didn't, actually didn't have a Super Nintendo. I was like the one Nintendo console I never got to own. Um, so I technically I played the in the in time arcade version uh, a little more, um, but uh, yeah, Hyperstone Heights was just, was a very good time. Yeah, you know, that was multiplayer fun. Yeah, yeah. But what what do y'all think? One of the enjoyable features about the uh, Hyperstone Heist was, for me, the, if I remember correctly, the ability to throw the enemies at the screen was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And it maybe became like a key feature. I know it was a key feature in the SNES game, because you had the only, only way you could damage one of the bosses. 
I forget if it was part of Hyperstone Heist or not. I don't think it was. Now, granted, the last time I played was two years ago. Though I will say, the, my only real issue with Hyperstone Heist, and it, this might be nitpicky and I admit to it, is I think the game was split into six-ish stages, but on like stage four, you have to refight all the prior bosses. Which oh, like it's like I, it's a little early for this game, isn't it? Oh well. But otherwise, I thought Hyperstone Heist. I I I don't agree with some people crapping on that game. I don't, I don't think I ever deserved it. You know, just because not goes turtle the time doesn't mean it was bad. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. Although uh, I will say, Turtles in Time is. Probably the best turtles game. <laughs> uh, my, my, my underrated fave is probably uh, TMNT three. You know, yeah, for the NES. But um, I did to play that one. Uh, but uh, speak of name brand beat 'em ups, Batman Returns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's Actually, a banger of a soundtrack. <laughs> I never got to play this one, uh, but um, I, I played the Sega CD version of it. Mm. Uh, the Sega CD version is a um, half driving game, half plat- side score platformer, whereas the Genesis version uh, is a beat em up. Um, so it's got a neat scene Batman just fucking just like chucking people on their neck and stuff like that. Uh, it's like, oh, this, this it predates Arkham Asylum. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Punky, do you want a pop or a shotgun? Or one? Here, I got another one. Okay. Um, and this one I actually really like, and um, hopefully you guys like some anime. Oh. And sadly, we never got this, but people in Japan, Brazil did. The Yu Yu Hakusho Sunset Fighters game. <laughs> <laughs> I actually emulated that and played it. It... Uh, I'm actually not too bad at it either. Yeah, I've, I've, once you I've figure it out recently. <laughs> and I was gonna say the arcade mode is not even that difficult, even on default difficulty. But you could definitely see where Treasure would tech would take inspiration for two future titles after that, with the plane shifting, you know, between the front and back. And kind of will be mup stuff, which you'd see in their use of their upcoming, at that time, uh, Saturn game, Garden Heroes. And then we're going to fast forward to Nintendo DS era with their two Bleach games, which played nearly identical, actually, which I would suggest those games if you anyone tracks those down or liked you know, one or the other. Am I thinking of the wrong game? I thought it was the, I thought it was the split, screen, uh, split screen kind of theatrical fighting. Are you thinking more of the Budokai, uh, or not Budokai, the Dragon Ball games on Super Nintendo? No, I know those were, those felt more like traditional fighters to some degree. Oh, I, th- I think you're thinking the Super Nintendo one. Or, the, they, or are... the Game Gear one. This might be it. That's why I'm looking it up right now. Okay, yeah, so this was the more traditional fighter. Okay. Yeah, I played There's a the four Gear player... Gear I think it's a four-player mode. That's wild. Oh yeah. Like I said, like in the in the Bleach game and the DS, it actually would carry that. So, like I said, if you like that, and if you don't like even the Bleach the anime, because hey, I I guess if you don't like it, the game itself is worth playing if you're not a fan of the license. Okay, I'll see your anime game and raise you a cartoon game. Etsman. Yes. Na 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 na. Oh, man. First of all, good selection. You know, Wolverine, Cyclops, uh, Gambit, and uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Yeah. So, kind of a few ladies in there, but whatever. Um, uh, but, yeah, good solid mechanics, platform, and action. Uh, it's like the level is that a bit cryptic at times, especially when you're just a young kid. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm just going to get out of my frustration as a little kid. Reset the goddamn game. <laughs> don't hold it too long because it's completely reset. Oh, uh, that. Yeah, I was about to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Very cryptic. Oh, man. Uh, then, um. Yeah, that's been, uh, two Clone Wars, which, uh, 
was uh, very fast paced uh, in comparison. Uh, it also be panic at times, but uh, also a good game. Uh, bigger slice of investment too. <coughs> a little bit of that. Yeah, and I remember that if I remember right, the first stage is like ran like it randomly gives you a character to start with. Yeah. Just throws you right into the middle of it. Which is actually pretty cool to be honest. I can see being frustrating for some like don't start me off that character, they suck. <laughs> but, yeah, I know one like Beast. Yeah, I remember dying as him a couple times as a kid when I played it. Oh, then when you unlocked Magneto, that was so cool. So I, I'm not, I know it's not really, but damn, the X Men arcade game, that, that was a fun one by Konami. Oh, yeah. Welcome to die! Welcome to die! X, X Chicken! The fact that they recreated the, uh, the, the, the can't be voice acting on purpose. It was great. Yeah, for the XBLA and PS3 versions, they almost sound near identical. That's the best part. Like, if you probably didn't pay attention like closely, you'd never know. Yeah. Ah, uh, see here, Punky Turn. Let's see. How about? I got one game to mention. Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine. Uh, the Poyo Poyo clone. I love Poyo Poyo. I mean, so do I. And I can say I have finally beaten Dr. Robotics from Mean Machine like last year. Thanks. That game is Poyo tough. Poyo Poyo was yeah. so enjoyable, they not only ported it to the SDS, they reported it twice to the Genesis under its original title and under Mean Bean Machine, as well as Kirby getting his own version of it and the original port. And it has multiple sequels and a Genesis sorry and a Tetris Poyo hybrid you could play. Poyo Poyo Tetris is great. Yes, I am a nerd, because I love that game. Uh, fight me in it. Did you just say like, uh, fight me in it? Yeah, fight me in Poyo Poyo Tetris. I, I did it, well, I don't actually yeah, yeah. have that one. Uh, oh, come on. I know. Time to go buy it. I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. Where are you waiting for Nintendo to re release it? <laughs> well, one, I, I do not own the Switch. I was a little shocked by that. You seem like a Switch person. Um, really? I always took it more as a Dom. I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. That was a perfect uh, joke. Beautiful. Magical. Uh, but you know, y'all y'all can fight in. One of the, uh, the games that put Sega Genesis on the map. Good old Street Fighter 2. Mm. Pick your edition. There's 10 of them. But, you know. Uh, Hyper Fighting Turbo. Special Edition new fight challengers, whatever. Uh, but yeah. Good music all around, good graphics, good mechanics. You know, uh... I will, I will raise you one street with another set of streets. The Streets of Rage. Hello! Blaze is my waifu. That is enough said. <laughs> yeah. I greatly enjoyed uh, that series. I would love a... Group port of it to have a. Uh, I just want. I want more Sega. I just want more collection editions. I want all my stuff on a, on PC, all to grab in one place. Just do solid ports. That's all I ask. I don't even need magic. They just have to run and have multiplayer. That's it. That's all I want. Don't even. Not even a hurdle. Big hurdle. Just Jeez, use Steam's please. peer to peer shenanigans and you'll be done. Boom. Knocked it out of the park. Or just I'll play all the fight, kid. Ah. All right, and also give me Streets of Rage Five, please. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's they they said they'd do it. Although Sega, let them have Joe Hihashi. If I sorry, screw up his name, the last name there as a playable character. Don't say no this time. Just let the devs have it. Oh uh, man, you know what a uh, bullshit hard game was. Uh. Chalk, oh, chalk, yep, chalk in the Forever Man, 
Yeah. I didn't have it, but the, the neighbor up the road did. Chalk him. Uh, that right. game this. was it's like the game. Dark Souls of side of scrollers. That wasn't side scrollers. It's kind of like like a, like a 2D platformer, action platformer. Um, that was bullshit hard. And you know how a, a boss would take you know in, in any game would take like you know three, five, so maybe eight 10 hits. hits. Yep. Chaka, they took about I think it was eighteen hits per boss. And uh, and in fact. They made the game so hard they actually didn't make an ending. Hmm. <laughs> that is, that is uh, my reaction. Yeah. Oh, good gracious. Okay. Well. Uh, what? Which what game you got? Okay, uh, I got one. Now, this was released on a lot of other games, but Cool Spot. Yeah! I, I grew yeah. up with the Jackie version, so... I think I played both. They were, they were very similar, but... And I, also the, I also grew up with the Game Boy version as well. <coughs> Sounds like you played a lot of Game Boy variants of a lot of things. Sounds like you had a Game Boy. <laughs> I did, and well... I mean, I have no problem just... I, I play a lot of the games till you can uh, back this up on my own stream. Oh, yeah. I wish I played as many games as he did. I mean, I've been, and I, I will give you an exact number. As of yesterday, 733 games being on stream. You got me beat hands down so far. I have to be fair, though, I play some really long chonkers. Yeah, I need to... Uh, yeah. I tend to lean on things that have long storylines and multiple cutscenes. Yeah. I know you feel it. Oh, time to play some more. I mean, I'm planning on play starting Fancy Star 2 here pretty soon. Also, I'll You know, you should also play Tilly. Tell Jamie and Earl? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Definitely should play some Toe Jam and Earl. I think you'd have a blast on it. That's that's such a that's like that's such a stoner game. Uh, you know, okay. I'm I'm gonna talk about an illegal game. Okay. A ROM hack. Uh huh. Sonic Hellfire Saga. What? Sonic Hellfire Saga. It's a ROM oh. hack based oh. on oh. ROM hacks. Based off, uh, I believe the Sonic Three and Knuckles engine. So imagine a crossover between that and Castlevania. Huh. And with cameos with from Mickey Mouse and Arthur from Ghouls and Ghosts. Mm. Trust me, it's a lot better than you think. That's asking a bit. That's a little... Got hmm. me looking at it sideways going, what? Oh, so actually, I'm, since, I'm upside since down. <laughs> since we're all kind of huge Sonic fans here, uh, and probably a lot of our a lot of people listening in, uh, if you haven't got a chance to actually thoroughly enjoy uh, the Rob Hack mentioned here so far, uh, alongside another Sonic Rob Hack engine built off of the Sonic Three and Knuckles engine is Sonic Air. I greatly, I would greatly uh, recommend it. Especially if you have a Steam copy for a Steam version of uh, Sonic Three and Knuckles, uh, works very well. It creates a extra enjoyable environment. Brings a lot of the two systems together. Very, very. How best way to describe it? It brings new life into it as a whole. Uh, may I make a double suggestion then? Yes. Okay, so I'm cheating because it's technically originally a Game Gear game, but someone had made a 16-bit remake of Sonic Triple Trouble. Yeah, oh, that would, oh, you'll count me in on that one. That sounds fun. Oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll link, I'll link it so you can try it out to you, you know. Please. Because yeah. it's also really cool about it. This is what's going to be awesome. You know what? But, you, you, there's just more you can play it than just Sonic. You can unlock some cool stuff in the game. That's as far as I'm going to say. 
and it has some cool <sighs> replay value. Oh, I thought you were going to put it in the uh, game chat. <laughs> oh. And uh, one Sonic and ROM hack I do not recommend, Sonic XL. Okay. <laughs> Wait, why? Uh, that thing's Tilly, hilarious. I, Tilly, that thing is I, hilarious. I, uh, you're going to be disappointed in Upside Down Matthew. Just, oh, yeah. I have a physical copy of that. Wait, <laughs> how? I did, I, eBay. Is it a scratch and sniff sticker or something like onion rings? Oh, oh, good God. But that sounds a little too cursed. Uh, yeah, but if, if, if I had a copy of Sonic XL and it smelled like onion rings, I, I would reconsider. Yeah, but uh, scratch and sniff technology, that, that, was, that was a time. It was. I mean, Earthbound. I wouldn't know, but uh, back to Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, that was like one of the first games that was like uh, roguelike. Uh, or like the levels were kind of randomly generated. Um, uh, and yeah, you played as two stoners, and then you had the sequel, which mm-hmm. was kind, of, which was totally it was a mind fuck. Um, I remember Wait. I used to have a a, a friend that would um, swing by all the time to play Street Fighter Two get, get with me, and then the last time he came by, because I suggested, "Why don't we play something different? Let's play Toe Jam Earl uh, Two. Um, what was it, Funkatron or something? I can't remember, but um, Funkatron and." Yeah. and and um, he never showed up again after, after we, I made him play that. <laughs> never saw him again. So it was a uh, friendship breaker. Yeah, pretty much. I, I didn't think the game was that offensive. But, um, well, at, uh, least, at least you didn't play Toe Jam and Earl 3 with them, so you're fine. I always wanted to get that game. You know, it's, it's interesting that they, they found the Sega Dreamcast prototype for that. Yeah. Uh, hers complete on the Xbox. Oh yeah, they it, it released retail on Xbox. Like yeah, like it's almost done on the Dreamcast, but you know, Dreamcast went belly up. Oh, their <laughs> launch style was, it was really good. Sega, bring me Power Stone to PC. Do it. Bring me Power Stone Three. Or Capcom, come on, do it. Oh, it was do Capcom. It. Yeah, Capcom, bring me Power Stone Three. Thank you, Capcom, for giving us on PSP, but we need on modern systems now. Yeah. Dreamcast and PS3. Also, give us Darkstalkers. Yeah. I think they did give us a pile of Darkstalkers, didn't they? Well, I want a new game. I'm greedy. You want a new game? You're greedy. You want a new game. Yeah. You know a game I'd like to see a sequel to? Shoot. Road Rash. Good. Right, Road Rash was such a fun, and it was such oh. an addicting racing game. Uh, and especially when you could just beat the shit out of other racers. And then when <laughs> you got arrested, or you died, you got like, or even one sometimes, you got these hilarious-ass cutscenes. Yeah. You ever played Road uh, Rash, the 3DO version? No. Uh, no, but I played the Sega CD version, which is quite different. If you want one... Uh. One more Genesis game I would not mind bringing up quickly. I, hopefully, maybe one of you guys can get to any percent world record of, I think, 9 minutes and 40 seconds. Don't fact check <laughs> I know it's time to change. Is Barney's Hide and Seek. Why? There, there, there's a no touch controller any percent because the game can beat itself. No. Serious. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't know how to accept that. It's just... Uh. So how about a cursed fighting game like Shaq Fu? I beat Shaq Fu. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to say something. What's up? It's not as bad as people say. Uh, it's, I it's, not a, it's not a good fighting game, but it's not as bad as people say. I don't doubt it. Yet again, I'm also the person that also digs through a lot of trash, so I guess you can yeah, call me the garbage man. It was, it was weird. Like, we loved the game, this game, but, uh, but it wasn't really that good, like, back by it. It might be more of a Power Rangers fighting game. The Power Ranger one's good. Oh, did you ever, yes. did you ever play the Power Rangers beat up game? Yes. That one was legendary. That one had good music. That one, yeah, that one's damn good music. Yeah, yeah. I, I played that... Uh, 
two months ago for the first time. Because I was just jumping games. I was like, let's play Power Ranger games. Why not? Because I meant to play the fighting game, but I booted up the wrong game. So I was like, wait a second. Hey, I'll just roll with it. Needless to say, I would probably put it maybe in the top five, if not top ten, Genesis beat em ups. Like, Streets of Rage is better. <laughs> I, no, might put above, I, I might put it above Hyperstone Heist, though. I don't know. The It only had the two plane uh, limit, didn't it? Where you can only jump up and down between the two planes? So you dodge the cars and stuff like that? True, but I'm just saying in terms of like the ter in terms of the fun I had, I think I would put it above Hyperstone Heist. Yeah, all right. <gasps> oh no. But my number one is still Golden Axe, even though I, I admit there's some slightly better beam ups on the system. I just the first one's just my favorite. I'm completely biased because I've been playing that game since I was four and had can beat it by myself since I was five. Because my daddy told me all the pro strats. All the pro strats. You want to talk about, like, elder family members helping out and all that fun stuff and teaching you how the game, or at least how to enjoy a game? Believe it or not, I, I ended up enjoying... Um, I don't remember what year it was. I want to say one of the earlier versions, or earlier uh, renditions, when they started doing the shenanigans. It was one of the Madden games. My grandfather, um, he, he would play that with me and my brother all the time. And because he, one, knew football, and two, was good at the game, we didn't beat him very often. So, and I never really got the chance. Like, he got busier when he, when he went from uh, one glass factory to the other. But, man, I, one of these days, I, I really wish I had the chance to really beat him at it. Like, I was like, oh, God, get you. I was going to get back. I was going to get that win. I was going to get back that win. It was going to be beautiful. But I greatly appreciate him. I mean, that's how I learned football. Was he, uh, he decided to sit down and show me uh, Madden. It was, just, it was just fun. Oh, Mutant League. That's a game series that needs a reboot. Yeah, they, they were, I think they were trying to work on one, but it it just it, the Kickstarter didn't happen. Like it happened, but didn't get funded. All it needs to be is a pile of fictional teams, a pile of fictional names. Uh, you need a skeleton team that's really bad because they're re they are in every game really bad. You can you can just really just destroy them. <laughs> Be honest. If you actually had to fight a skeleton IRL, they have no muscle. Like you're just gonna push them over. They're gonna fall apart. Yeah. Sorry, we immediately started talking more about stuff when you left. I mean, okay. you know, one strong thing about the Genesis, even though I'm not the sports, the Genesis did wipe the floor with Nintendo back and forth with the amount of sports games. NBA Jam. Fun fact, that was part of the Blockbuster tournament back in the old days, and I participated yeah. in that tournament. Me too. I did not. I, was... I might have been a little I've bit too just... young. I've been in four tournaments and won two of them. GG. Uh, yep, I won a uh, Mortal Kombat and a Street Fighter 2, and I lost in Mortal Kombat, and I lost in NBA Jam. Hmm. Uh, and it was funny, uh, uh, so I would have been in a total of six tournaments, uh, and it was those four that I did. Uh, I've been in two Soul Calibur two tournaments. Um, but the funny thing is, I um, should not. Basically, I won and I lost one, uh, uh, and it was on GameCube. And uh, so it's, I was like, I was saying like, I I never played GameCube before. I don't know how to fuck this controller works and stuff. I guess everyone thought I was an easy mark, but I somehow I fucking won the tournament. I uh, you know I never never played a GameCube uh, controller uh, before at all. I just uh, but it's just I just I just knew uh, Nightmare's uh, move set from the PS2 version. Um, <laughs> but I think they're ready for me the next time and he beat me in the first round. Uh, uh, so yeah, free for free in game tournaments. Uh, 
Um, Taylor uh, is confirmed to be able to beat anyone at gaming. You know, at least five I, minutes. I am undefeated in Fortnite. EG. Yep, one and oh. Did you actually play it? So let's go get redacted. <laughs> let's go I, get... Well, yeah, like, I was like, I'm just going to see what the hell the hype is about. So I installed Fortnite, played one match, won, then I installed. Left on top, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just go get redacted, huge streamer. How do you how do you go around and uh, see what happens? Uh, no, that sounds like a terrible idea. Let's not do that. Uh, let's see. I know I did cheat. I, but have ever you guys used this the game genie? I, I only own. Growing up. I only owned the game genie for the NES, and the and that was it. I think I owned the Game Shark later for the, I want to say, place, yeah, the PlayStation 1, because it allowed me to run uh, Japanese games on it. I, um, I bought multiple Game Sharks and could never get them to work. Yeah, only one game I ever got to work on, which was Final Fantasy VIII. Um, yeah, so I just, like, used the level codes, um, to, uh, so, uh, make everyone, all my, my teammates level 99. Uh, there was some kind of weird glitch where, like, Squall was level 78, which, okay, still, still big. But Zell was level 1, which, uh, you know, you, you start the game off at level 7 or something like that. Yeah. And what's funny is that, um, in just recent memory, I've, uh, discovered that the, um, Levels don't really matter in that game because the enemies scale with you. So there's no crystal point. It's all about the junction system. Yep, that know. sounds pretty accurate. You did level grind. I always level. I always grind it in that game, and cause I, and I guess I never had to. Yeah, I was. I was, I was very dumb back then. Um, well, um, it happens. Yeah, like I, ne I never even properly used the junction system. I just, I just, I just auto, I just let the auto say do it. You know, never <laughs> fucking bothered. So I could have been OP and never grinded one level. Anyways, Castlevania Bloodlines. Uh, Great game. I've never been able to beat it though. Yeah. One day. One day. Funky, you play it? No, surprisingly. Uh, it is on my to-do list. Definitely. Uh, then I, then if you beat it, I have a. You should play the sequel to it. I'm pretty sure that's Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Nope. Close. Portrait of Ruin. What? Portrait of Ruin's a direct sequel. Bloodlines. Yeah, Bloodlines. It has a sequel on Nintendo DS. Portrait of Ruin. I'm almost, almost certain that Bloodlines leads into Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Well, I'm like. Uh, you're thinking Rondo of Blood. Oh, yes, I was. My apologies. It's all good. They use blood and all those other things across a vampire-themed game series. Kind of mix up somebody with somebody else at one point. It's all good. It's gonna, you know what? I got a hidden gem for you guys on the Genesis. While the NES game is really good, so is the Game Boy version, though those two are made by Capcom. I don't know who made <laughs> this version, but Little Mermaid on the Genesis is a pretty decent game. Oh. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a decent game. Uh, I My argument said the NES game is better and the Game Boy version is just as good as the NES version, but it's still not bad. It's just a less good game that's still a good game. Mm. Uh, let's see. I got a good game made by a bad company. Uh, Maximum Carnage. Play Why, am I Why am I trying to blank, but I know the name? It's hard as fuck, but it's got good, decent music. Uh, I even, even talked to Racing DC. Uh, but yeah, it's about, you know, Spider-Man and Venom, beat em up game. Right. Yeah, no. yeah, I think the neighbor kid had it. I did, but was not graced with playing it, unfortunately. 
It was a red cartridge too. It was neat. They were trying to show it's all about the grime. Hmm. I got one for Cyborg Justice. Not familiar. Really? It is a beat em up. One of the key components of the beat em up is you can uh, steal parts from your enemies who are also cyborgs. Wait a second. Uh oh. Oh, I've seen this janky beat em up. Oh, Janky! Janky! Are you upset that someone took off your arm and took off your head? No. <laughs> but no, I, I've seen this game. I I never knew the name, but I've seen a streamer beat it. I think we've a lot of us here have seen players beat games we should fly we play. <laughs> Myself included. Oh, there it is. You know, you got to if if you well if you have a list of uh, games you're to knock knocking out, that's definitely on the list. I heavily recommend when you play it through it, absorb as many heads as you can, or should say torsos as you can. Get you need to get down that that grab mechanic down to a science. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna be able to walk out of that thing alive. Yeah, I think they said the same thing. You're going to need lives, because that last boss is a P-O-T-A. I spelt that completely wrong. <laughs> you have smart. S-M-R-T, I mean S-M-A-R-T. P-I-T-A. <laughs> now, fun fact, that Simpsons reference I just yeah. made there. That's actually the voice actor dub, uh, flubbing the line. That wasn't in the script. Fun fact. Hopefully you don't mind your uh, daily rant of Simpsons trivia you didn't ask for. <laughs> I mean, we all always need a daily trivia of something. Half the fun. I mean, I, I think I've dropped a lot of just random things for you guys just on this uh, podcast alone today. I think I'm about out of uh, you know, s s the titles. Like, uh, there's still plenty on there, but uh, like I think we kind of went over the best of the best. Uh, like a good comment on like several others, but uh, like, what, oh, wow. what other ones you got, darlings? Oh, so many. Rocket Night Adventures. <laughs> yes. So Freddy Furry's in the house. Hey, Rocket Knight's pretty damn cool. Heavily recommended. I don't understand how that game to get more sequels. I mean, it, it did. It did get a sequel. It, it got, got a um, PC, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it got Sparkster, both the Genesis and Super Nintendo version, which are two very different games, and the Rocket Knight Adventures on the PC in 2010, 2011. Hmm. Although it refuses to work on my PC, so I've yet to try the latter. One day. Although the best is still considered the original. Happens. Let's see. I have any other Genesis game? I mean, I always have more. Yeah, Unless you guys want to list one. Let's see here. I think this is game. Let's go with next one. How about I was gonna pull Com uh, uh, Comic X? No, what's the name of it? Comic, Comic, Comic Zone. Comic Zone. That game yes. is so hard. I can get halfway through it. One day I will make it mine. Comic Zone is a great it's all, game. It's all it's about super the super hard. It's all about knowing where the wall cheese is. Yeah. Grabbing stuff off the wall and uh, grabbing, ripping the comic and and getting things you need. Yes. And having your pet rat, whose name escapes me right now, do things for you so you don't have to. 
Speedruns of that game is, is hilarious to watch. See, another oh, great game on uh, the Genesis that doesn't get talked about too often. Once the blue might hear some discourse about it. Uh, Rolling Thunder 2. So if you've never played Rolling Thunder, it's a great action game with, with a like kind of 1950s, 60s spy thing going on. Maybe, maybe that's just that these two. Where it's a, just a nice, you know, side scroller uh, where you know shoot your gun and take out the enemies. And you know, what once you do a lot, a lot of ducking and hiding in barrels and hiding in elevators and doors so you don't get killed. It's a really good game. It's just. It's not an easy game, but it's actually infant credits, so you know, enough time, patience, and learning patterns, you can beat the game. I, though, have not done that since, like, 2010. Uh, let's see here. How about Beyond Oasis? Oh, that's a fantastic game. Well, Except that sounds familiar. one thing happens. It soft-locked on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm not salty. I'm just. Wasn't it released on another system as well to kind of correct that issue? Like I a, mean, it did get like a sequel the Sega on the Saturn. Saturn. It did get a sequel on the Saturn. Oh, I must be oh. thinking of it. Okay. <coughs> uh, so you don't you did get a sequel on the Saturn? Shoot. Jackson's Moonwalker. <laughs> you know, I've never played the Genesis version, but the arcade version is so freaking good. Uh, Genesis version is a lot different, but also uh, pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I get the dancing, you got the kicks and stuff, freaking uh, cross grabbing. Uh, <laughs> turn to a, hey, don't forget. Turn to a mech. There's also a prototype version out there that's been floating around that has Thriller. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to fact check what I just said there. I wonder what it could be really implemented in. Well, there's a... I think there's the one... Because the storyline is pretty solid. I don't, don't understand why they would need zombies. And maybe I'm just being nitpicky. Wait... Oh, let's see, Moonwalker. Yeah, there was a, there was a zombie uh, level. <clears throat> we could do the filler dance. Right? So, okay, so, yep, there do exist some common. There does exist some copies with it. So it is a thing. Interesting. And it does really sound good in the Genesis, um... Uh... Sound chip. Well, yeah, everything sounds better than Genesis Sound Chip. Even it, it, I mean, SNES games. <laughs> sometimes, so, some of those Super, some of those Super Nintendo devs did really push that system with the Sony Sound Chip on that really good, as opposed to the Genesis Yamaha one. Okay, Pucky, we got that wow us. Okay, we talked about. Gunstar. Uh, I'm picking for my 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 list. Uh, we talked about Shining Forest, Toy Story. Well, there is one launch title we have yet to talk about. A launch title. And I do think the Genesis version is much better than the arcade version, though that's not saying a whole lot. Altered Beast. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little overrated. <clears throat> it's a little overrated? Oh, it absolutely is. Like, it's not a bad game. It's just not a great game. The Genesis 1 version does control much better than the arcade one. But it's just an okay game at the end of the day. And I mean, teetering between that, like, 6 and 5.5 5 out of 10. I mean, when it comes to games on the Genesis, sometimes we just took what we got, and it was fun. Yeah, considering... If, if, if you guys don't know much about the Genesis release schedule, 
The Genesis release schedule at the very start was bad. Like, I mean, yep. the Sega Genesis barely got games in its first, like, two years. Until, really? Yeah. I believe after their launch and on uh, 88 in Japan, 89 in America, they barely got any games. It didn't really start getting the ball rolling until Sega pushed a lot harder for third-party devs, Sonic the Hedgehog making the system you know, on the map. Which, I mean, the Sega the Jets has kind of killed, you know, Sega's prior mascot, Kid Alex. Hi, Kid Alex. Sonic is, Sonic's a lot cooler. Or Alex Kid, rather. I don't know why I keep pushing the name. I remember Alex Kid was such a fucking bastard to beat in, in Sega All-Stars Tennis. Yeah, I, I, I got salty while fighting him because the game wouldn't let me win. Yeah, so, so many attempts. I finally unlocked the little fuck. Ugh. And it also made me want to go play Super Nintendo with uh, good old Mega Man Soccer. But anyways. Uh... I'm sorry. You could... I got a little funny thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I kind of bullied someone into playing Mega Man Soccer recently for their stream. Nice. They are doing, they're doing the whole Mega Man, the, you know, Mega Man themed month. I'm like, all right, when's Mega Man Soccer? It's like, it just said, kept telling me, I'm not doing Mega Man Soccer. And then everyone <laughs> started joining in every stream. When you do Mega Man Soccer, I'm not doing Mega Man Soccer. How about Rockman Soccer? That's the same game, Matt. Which is also a nerd game where they didn't put it in an ending. There is an ending. It's glitched. It doesn't. It never plays. Yeah. Huh. It's go to uh, line is just skipped, but it technically do beat it. <laughs> okay, I that think... made me salty. Uh, Spider Man X Men Arcade Revenge. I played the the Super Nintendo version. I. Uh, at least the Super Nintendo one. I can't talk on the Genesis version. I thought it was an okay game. Though, you're not the only person today I've ever heard say that. Where they're like, nope, that's a childhood game I do not like ever going back to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess how I feel about Tasmania. That, that That's my childhood tra trauma game. So the worst part uh, is, I still have my copy of it. Ugh. My childhood hurdle when it came to games was Revolution X. Me and my brother could just never beat it. It was a arcade shooter turned into a, a cursor shooter. And it just, it didn't do well. It was hard. Yeah. <sighs> so I guess the developer for the ports makes sense. It's called Rage Software. Hmm. Oh, no, the game itself, even it's it's even its arcade part was a pain in the butt. It was hard. Uh, um, here's an underrated one from Namco. Uh, the Splatterhouse trilogy. You know, I never played those. I only played the original. Well, Turbo Graphics slash arcade version. I'd say to get a little better as the game go on, because uh, like the the first game you're just kind of like on a go side score track, whereas two feels more like a natural beat 'em up. And, and three, three, I need to uh, the mansion. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, three was non-linear. Good time. Uh... Oh yeah, game ground was pretty good too. Oh yeah, Action Fifty Two. Played that I've played it. Action Fifty Two on Genesis. Yeah. It's better than the NES version. That's not saying much, though. Yeah. Remember doing the old Action One Hundred Four challenge where you played both versions back to back. Undo that. <sighs> Sounds like hell. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Do that or both three days. I mean, I'd rather do the Action Zero challenge and just take both cartridges and sell them on eBay and make money. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's only going for 130 bucks. 130 bucks, I can spend on something else. Yep. Okay. The save money challenge. Uh, $52 challenge. Uh, okay. 
Uh, any more uh, games uh, come to mind? I guess gyms or otherwise. The last no. final game I'll bring up that I can keep going for a while, and that is dramatic pause. Dynamite Heady. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yes, it's Dynamite. Good old Dynamite Heady. I only know that one makes you like the Sonic uh, collection. Uh, so, yeah, I never really encountered that game growing up at all. I mean, I didn't play that one as an adult, and even then, when I played it, I didn't play the American version. I played the Japanese version because it got released on PS2 in Japan only, and, well, that's what I have. And needless to say, it's a fun game. It's really good. I know the North American version is significantly harder. Really? Huh. Yeah, they gave you less fair. life, I believe. It's, it, they got but also like the tutorial at the start of the game, how to play the game. And those are like two other things. Oh, great time, though. Uh, I guess. Uh, Another fun fact. And I, I, I never played the game. I just feel like this one's just bringing it up just for a little fun thing. Decap Attack. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of too. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you didn't know that game's actually reskinned from another game in Japan. But the North oh. American version is considered way better. For the simple fact, it gives you three hits until you die. And it's just overall considered a... a a little bit more retool game as a whole to make it a much more enjoyable experience. It was like Japanese version, stupidly frustrating. The North American version, actually kind of fun. Okay, I'll throw in another game: Revenge of Shinobi Three. Oh yeah, we we have to talk about those games because well, Shinobi is a big Sega franchise. It oh, is yeah. a big, big one. Yeah, not the appeal of the first game, but I guess you gotta start somewhere. Uh, I guess two is Japan only, because I never really seen Ka Shinobi two, but three though, yeah, that one had that one was awesome. Yeah, for the power, so the platforming. Now was it Shinobi whatnot. one or is it three that had the unauthorized Spider-Man Batman cameo? I wouldn't know. I don't remember. Well, no. Google foo. Uh, uh, oh, okay, I made you a couple more references. It's, so it's a Revenge of Shinobi, as Spider-Man, Godzilla, Batman, Rambo, and Terminator. <laughs> <references>. Damn. <Nice. laughs> uh, Punky, what's your last one? Oh, it got to be my last. Oh, okay. I'm double checking to see if this is the game I'm thinking of, so don't don't jump on me just yet. Jump, okay. jump, jump, jump around, jump around, jump, jump. And I'm just thinking of the song, stamp, 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 stamping on the ground. And I haven't heard that for ever. Sometimes it likes popping up in my uh, feed. All right, I'll I'll end my list on something. Since I talked a lot about a, a metric ton of good games, I will talk about a game that kind of kick-started itself better on the SNES after it got its kickstart on uh, the, the Genesis, Turrican. Oh, uh, yeah? It's a, it's a platformer with the ability to get power-ups. It's... Um, Music is great for its sequels. Um, the fact that it didn't die out immediately is was the more surprising part. But Turrican was okay, but Super Turrican is much better. <laughs> yeah, like I heard about it, uh, cause especially because this is on the like the Nintendo uh, Switch Online. Um, but yeah, I never got around to playing that one. Uh, it's one of those weird anomalies where the sequel class, slash port forward is just better for some reason. Yeah. Okay, I'll have one more. Uh, <laughs> Mega Man, <laughs> the Wily Wars. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like the, the Wily I love the Wars. The Wily yeah. Wars. Wily Wars. Dr. Wily. 
Dr. Warwick. Oh, Wowie Wars. My bad. Uh, uh, go ahead, hon. Sorry. <laughs> I never got to play this one personally. Uh, but the fact that Mega Man on a Sega Genesis, that's what? That's unheard of. Yeah. Uh, it's basically yeah. the first three games combined. Plus Wily's Tower as a bonus. Yeah. I think and... it is part of the Mega Man collection. So, uh, so you should... Uh... Definitely grab that little sucker. And I suppose it's worth bringing up, there is currently a fan sequel in the works. Mega Man 4 is already done. They're working on 5 and 6 pouring into the Genesis. Interesting. I mean, pretty cool. I mean, not, not, not that I'm trying to purposely go on a tangent here. and A good tangent. So I don't know what you call that. A positive rant. Positive rant. You know, it, it, I, I love that these okay, years okay. have passed and you just see so many fans being so, like, they make these games because they don't they don't have to. It's because they can. Because they want to. To see, hey, what if Blah existed on Blah? And I honestly love when fans do this kind of stuff. You know, like the yes. Super Mario Brothers, uh, you know, the NES game. You know, Port of Genesis. That's a pretty cool version. I want to see Mario Wonder on Sega Game Gear. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll see you one better. <coughs> I want to see uh, Super Mario 64 on N-Gage. Oh, wow. There actually is two exclusive Warhammer video games on N-Gage. There's also a Elder Scroll game on there, too. What? Seriously? Yep. It's some weird games. There, there was a Fax Xanadu game on there. Or I'm sorry, Xanadu, not Fax Xanadu. Xanadu. Sorry. Immediate Xanadu came to my brain. Yeah, because we all know about Tomb Raider on there, but... Apparently, yeah, Tomb Raider port actually runs pretty confidently. Same with the Tony Hawk Pro Skater port. I gotta give me an engage. Just... Good, good luck. They, they cost money now because, you know, those game collectors, <laughs> we suck. You know, we, we buy yeah. everything up. There is nothing wrong with ex uh, keeping your collection and working on it. That's why ref getting refurbished games or reprints is completely acceptable, especially if you want to actually contain continue enjoying the medium in a respectable and enjoyable environment, and nobody should fault you for it. Agreed. Now, However, I had Nintendo... Please get your vice grip off your own products. We want to enjoy them. Stop killing fan projects. Yeah. You know what the funny part is? You're killing your goodwill. Sorry, I will rant if I not stop, if I don't stop. Yeah, you know, the worst part is Nintendo's surprisingly still one of the better ones about it. Sega's no. worse. No, Sega's like I have not I never no, gotten with, copyright strikes with, from Sega, uh, thankfully. Here's the thing with Sonic they're nice with. Other properties are not nice with. Such as? So I'm going to just sum up things quick, because if not, I'm going to go on a tangent myself. Uh, there's been numerous fan games throughout the years, such as people are making a Streets of Rage sequel, you know, or combining the games. Sega's like, nope, nope, you're not making that. Nope, illegal. <laughs> so now I say, it, it, heck, EA's been an asshole about it recently, too. You know, someone was making a Plants vs. Zombie 3, but they were, they were starting to rebrand the name. So, like, hey, I, I, I'm i making Plants vs. Zombie 3, but I'm changing the name. And EA sent him a cease and desist. And he's like, well, I'm still making the game, guys. I wasn't going to keep keep the name. So, you know, all the companies suck. Just give me the rest of all the games. I'll let you make, guys make sequels, okay? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Although I will use my rights to get no more Bubsy games, I'm sorry. It's my IP uh, to, but my rights not to use them. And yes, I was making a Smiling Friends reference. Uh, <laughs> I need to watch the new season. Yeah, yeah, new season, new season. I remember once I saw uh, like a retro, I like guess, Second Chances game or something uh, at, a, at a game store. And it sold the original sticker on for like fifty bucks, but uh, the guy had like a it slashed out one hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah. That's a good uh, I'm like, fuck, man. I'm like, yeah. Is this supposed to the price supposed to go down? Not you know up. Just, uh, you know, use two ways to hide it. Yeah, you know, like if it's 
Put a fucking price sticker on it. If you want to sell for fucking again, prices. Again, for those co- who would like to collect the games, we've made mention. Um, there is reprint stores out there that, uh, that you can find online to be able to get yourself access to these wonderful games. And you have the right. They, they, yeah, they, a lot of these games are currently not in print. So the people who own the rights to these things do not have water to stand on right now. So as long as they're not on the respective stores, Steam, uh, Switch, PlayStation, Xbox stores, there is no reason you cannot get the physical copies. Um, unless you're Sonic One, you're, you're on everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can get Sonic One in my refrigerator now. Mm-hmm. And now I want to see someone play Sonic One on a refrigerator. I mean, someone's ported Doom to it, so. Well, yeah, but that's Doom. You can, we've ported Doom to a set of cells now. Hey, cells, cells are pretty cells. good at playing Doom. They play it very slowly. Hey, they still play it. Did someone pour Doom to a pregnancy test? Yes. I found that they weren't pregnant. They only were giving birth to Doom. Uh, your child's a real demon. Okay. Well, it was a good, nice rambling about Sega titles. Uh, good old Genesis. Um, but yeah, uh... Thank you for the memory, Sega. Yeah. Uh, you may be awkward and uh, cruel in your business practices, but you put out great products that create great memories. Now, Sega, uh, one last thing. Mm. When are we getting to Genesis 2? <laughs> <laughs> consoles. Uh, we miss you make consoles, darling. Uh, I'm shocked they're still independent. But... I would, I would not be opposed for them if, if they'd be down for it, them re-releasing and and oh, it's re-releasing a Genesis. Call it, Gen, you know. Just here's a here's a physical Genesis. We've done it again. Like, why? Because we're gonna bring all these old games back. Like, seriously, crack open the factory. You know how many people would spend money on that? I mean, uh, make the Genesis many wanted too. It would, it would. Killed it would kill the collection market, but it... <sighs> sorry, release that shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna spend two hundred dollars to play Earthbound with an actual physical copy. That's why I emulated it. I mean, I bought it on the Wii U store, Nintendo, and I emulated it. Well, <laughs> I emulated it too, but I did buy it. With... I played it in my childhood. I rented it from Blockbuster before that. I'm effectively just renting it until you put it on something I could purchase it. You put it on PC, it'll be bought without question. That's usually how I roll. Sorry, I ran. I will rant. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, go on. I'll see. While I bring back rental stores, I don't see that being a possibility. But that's not a rant for probably nostalgia '90s or something like that. Even Redbox is gone. Great, great. They put rental stores out of business. And then Netflix put them out of business. But who's put Netflix out of business? Netflix is putting Netflix out of business. Yeah, you're not wrong. I know it's prices. Like, holy shit. Yeah, like, now, now, every, now everyone's 15 bucks at least. No, it's the fact that, every, like, everybody wants to make a streaming service. Every other streaming service is trying to kill every other streaming service, which is killing themselves at the same time, because nobody <laughs> wants... And Kate Comcast... Oh, punky, punky, punky. Oh, God, you, yeah, rant, hear? rant. Rant, don't rant, don't rant. Yes, go ahead. Well, the, you know, the Waifu, the Waifu Tavern, you know, is slowly going to get its own uh, streaming service now. <laughs> For 15 bucks a month... Oh, Lordy. It's really the only thing. What? Pay my FF14 sub. See? Uh, okay, and, uh, but yeah. Anyways, let's, uh, let's wrap this up, folks. Y'all have a good night. We'll see you in the next one. Hello. Take care, yeah. folks.